from our homes. It's great to be um, here online again for our praise and worship and for our service this week. Um, we are just continually praying for you and praying that we are, um, you know, hopefully going to be together very soon. Um, yeah, so I just want to open this service into prayer. So if you would join me and close your eyes and bow your heads where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to commit this morning into your hands. We commit this service, Father. And um, in the midst of the chaos, God, you are, Father, the peacemaker of it all. We know that we can look to you, Jesus, in everything that is happening around the world, Father. All the issues that we're facing and being thrown, that we know, Father, that you are in control, that you don't you don't put these bad things in, in the world, but you make it better and you make it great again, Father. Fill our, help, fill our homes and fill our lives with positivity, Father. Let us continue to look to you as our guide, as our strength, Father. And um, we're just thankful, Father, that we're in this position, Father, where, you know, we are safe, we are healthy, and um, we just continually look to you, Father. Um, we want to praise you and give you back all the glory and all the praise. Amen.
Good morning, Jay Oxbury. What a wonderful day today. Okay, I just have a few announcements uh, before we hear the Word of God. Uh, good news. I have some good news for all of us. The good news is we are coming back on our regular service on the 5th of July. Okay, the first week of July. I've spoken to uh, Bly Park Community Center and I've spoken to the manager and uh, we met up uh, a couple of weeks ago and we assessed the place and according to their assessment and ours and my assessment uh, the hall can accommodate our numbers okay so it's good news so um, again um, I invite everyone to join our reopening on the uh, first week which is the 5th of July um, and we will be having our 10.30 start, 10.30 a.m. start. Number two, of course, we are, uh, we are now in the process of um, constructing our JIL Facebook Live, JIL Oxbury Facebook Live. So we are going to carry on with our online, or we, um, you know, we continue to expand our online uh, ministry. Okay, that's another good news. So for those of you who may be sick 
or unable to come to church, you can still watch our service. Okay, so third announcement on Monday, which is tomorrow, we're, I'm calling on a general meeting. So um, we're going to talk about the protocols that we're going to do, um, some, some requirements that Blyper Community Center is requiring us. So 7.30 at night uh, via Zoom. So I will be sent, Sister Emma will be hosting the Zoom. I will be sending or she'll be sending the ID and the password. So if you haven't got your Zoom app, please download and please join us as we uh, talk about um, the protocols of our service. So, amen. Are you excited? I'm excited. Okay, so uh, I will be seeing you very soon. So for the meantime, let's enjoy the rest of our few weeks as we listen to the Word of God. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, Church. A blessed Sunday to all of you who are tuning in once again on our online Sunday service. We appreciate your support, your attendance, and your heart to receive the Word of God today. You guys are doing incredible. And we also want to say thank you, Music Ministry, for that wonderful worships, uh, worship, for leading us into worship. Um, we thank you for your dedication in your um, service to God. Um, yes, so just a few announcements. There will be a general meeting um, on Monday, which is tomorrow at around 8.30 p.m. So please watch out for the Zoom ID that we will post either via FB, um, FB page. You know, we have a church FB page now. If you haven't accepted our invitation or liked it, please do so. So you guys can be um, updated with um, with the news and with the with the uh, um you know with announcements and stuff like that um so i could either post the zoom id in that platform or maybe via messenger um just to keep it private as well or to keep it safe um, but yeah but we would like for all of you guys to be a part of the meeting so we can discuss on how we can progress to our sunday service back to blight park since some restrictions have been lifted but yeah um any questions any um, suggestions you can raise it up there and you know it's also a good way for us to catch up before we meet um, face to face so yeah another um, another note um, please check out the uh, sorry the notes section for details on how we can still give our tithes and offering to our church we still still encourage all of you guys to continue to give with a cheerful heart for you know we know that this is your act of service or act of worship to our heavenly father to continue to bring glory to his name and you know what your obedience to the lord will be greatly rewarded so yeah um just before i continue on to the word of god if you can just pause with me for a short prayer so the holy spirit can lead us into our into his word um heavenly father um i thank you lord god for giving us this platform to come together and to receive from you um we ask the holy spirit to just move in the midst of this service um to move in our online service for this techno in this technology lord god um that we are sitting in our own homes in our in the comfort of our own homes i pray that the holy spirit lord god will continue just to be um to touch them to touch um their hearts to open up our minds um to your word and to your guidance and to your leading lord um we just ask you lord to take full control of this and we just want to continue to bring glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so our topic for this month is still um, one in Christ's power. One in Christ's power. So um, I'm not sure where everyone is at the moment, but I do know that there are a lot of people who are feeling broken right now. You know, I could be feeling broken right now, or it could be you or a family member, a church, a community, the people on the other side of the world. But for sure, you know, a lot of people are going through this. I got, a lot of people are um, 
experiencing this and you know we all have felt some sort of brokenness in our lives in in our years of existence right and brokenness come in different shapes and form it could be self-inflicted because um, of our bad and sinful nature some may perhaps be caused by another individual who has hurt us deeply to the core and it has scarred our hearts for the longest time and really giving us a hard time to move on or to cope and sometimes our brokenness can come from a physical physical um, brokenness um, which could be from an, an, a health issue an accident or just being for some who have um, been unfortunate to be born with it. Now, what I want to um, title our message today is um, called There is Power in Brokenness. Now, we often see our brokenness as a bad thing because, you know, these are the not so good experiences um, that we encounter in our lives. And when we hear brokenness, all these issues pop in our heads and they're not really positive ones you know feeling empty hurt feeling broken um, being in pain emotionally physically being sick for the longest time suffered from an abusive um, relationship suffered from injustice left by a loved ones hope feeling hopeless helpless um, just being numb times you know feeling weak um, you know, lonely, feeling unworthy, financially and relationally broken, you know, feeling rejected. Now, these situations associate with our brokenness or being broken. And most of the time, it's so hard to see and to believe that there is an end to this brokenness because, you know, you are talking about being weak here or being mocked or being rejected, being alone, um, being abused. You know, feeling hopeless. Now, how can there be how can there be power in the worst possible situations? Um, the moment that you are in that situation, it's so hard to understand that there's power in it. It's so hard to see the good side of it because we are hurting so bad that we are blinded with our emotions, with our hurts, and when our feelings and speak and our spirits are crushed, it's just so hard to to see past, to go, to see past, you know, to see through it. Um, but this is where the beauty of brokenness come. The Bible says in Psalm 34, 18, it says there that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Now, isn't it comforting to know that God is close to the brokenhearted? So whenever you feel broken, you know that God is there. You know, to those whose spirits are crushed, you know, when you're feeling empty, when you're feeling defeated, um, God is actually close to you. But there are times when it may not seem like it because, but you know, um, his word in the Bible always speaks the truth and we, we, we believe it. Um, his ways are not the ways of the world, but, um, you know, he sees differently on how we see on how the world sees he says in his word my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours so so often he acts in ways that are the exact opposite of what we expect and that's how sometimes we think that he is not close to us or that he doesn't understand um but he actually does. He's so close to us. He exact. He knows exactly what we're going through, because um, when you think about it, for him to know exactly what we're going through here on earth, he actually had to become human so that he can experience those emotions, those feelings, those pain, and that is through the um, through the Son, Jesus Christ. Now, sometimes we think that. God only wants to use our strengths, but what we don't realize is he also wants to use our weaknesses for his glory. And we can see that because that's what he did to, um, to his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus had to experience all those things. And from those things, um, there was so much power in his sacrifice. 
And so the beauty in our brokenness is when, you know, our stubborn hearts finally realize that we have no other option but to finally yield to God and say, you know what? Um, yes, Lord, I submit to you. You're all I've got. I've got nothing. I don't know what to do. And I need you. So when we finally admit to ourselves um, that we can't handle a certain, a certain situation anymore, he welcomes us with open arms because he longs for us. He's been wanting us to come to him even though we always put him last or we go to him as the last resort instead of going to him first. He still welcomes us um, because he longs for us more than we long for him. So there will be times when he will allow certain situations to happen in our lives that will be totally and completely out of our control because this may be the only way that we turn to him completely. And when we do, his great purpose for us will start to unfold and it will depend on how much authority we give the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts. Now, we know that Jesus has ascended to heaven and is sitting right next to the Heavenly Father. So the power that he's left us here on earth is the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, now, the power of the Holy Spirit is what continues to guide us in our journey until the time that we meet our, um, our Savior. So if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, what you need to do is you actually have to empty out your heart, throw out your own selfish agendas, dreams, needs, plan, and get rid of your own, um, get rid of our own stubborn will. And once you've emptied yourself of yourself in this way, God's Spirit will fill you completely and equip you um, equip you for whatever he wants to accomplish in your life, accomplish through you. Again, I'll say this again. Once you've emptied yourself of yourself, God's Spirit will fill you completely and equip you for whatever he wants to accomplish through you. Now, this is hard, once again, not in our human nature to just empty out ourselves and expect everything will just run smoothly with butterflies and rainbows and all those colorful things. Um, when we are actually in a state of brokenness, most of the time what we feel like doing is we feel like we just want to give up. But once we allow the Holy Spirit to fill us, He has a different way on how He guides us in our brokenness and that is the Jesus way. Um, again, we have to allow the Holy Spirit. And if we don't open up ourselves to the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, then we are only limiting His power in, in, our, in our lives. So we have to open up ourselves and welcome the Holy Spirit when we empty out ourselves so that He can fill us in with His power that's the only way that we can um, utilize and that the only way that the Holy Spirit can move in our lives um, that's the only way that we can be one in Christ when we allow we give authority to the Holy Spirit to um, to guide us through those situations um, and you know what I've actually felt some sense of brokenness in my relationship with my parents look my mom I think I'm sure you guys know my story, but I'll share it again. My mom left when we were young. Um, there were times when I didn't even know where she was or I didn't even care how she was or, you know, where she is. There, there was a, um, probably a time where I questioned myself, um, do I really care what, if the, anything happened to her? You know, and it's just sad. That's your mom. And to have that feeling of not feeling anything or not caring about her is just sad, you know? Like, yeah, definitely a brokenness in a relationship. And my relationship with my dad, that's another story. <laughs> I took offense on everything that he has said to me. So there will be times when I don't speak to him or see him for months and months. Um... But as I continue to grow in the knowledge and grace of God, I've always shared this, my testimony. 
the Lord keeps impressing to me this verse, Ephesians 6, 2. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. <sighs> now, I didn't feel like doing that. I didn't feel like following that verse. But I knew it's something that I need to do, that I have to obey. Now, the thing is, we have to understand the difference between um, emotion and action, um, between what you feel and what you do. Um, we cannot command an emotion, but we can command our actions. And in my Christian walk, as I have accepted Christ in my life, I have also accepted the fight against the enemy, Satan, and that is to show love to my community, church, and most importantly, my family. And my family obviously involves or includes my parents. So if I went with my emotions and, you know, not, um, if I went with my emotions because I don't think, I, you know, they were not there when I needed them the most. So I don't think I need them now. That was my mentality. But if I went with that, you probably wouldn't have met my mom today. Or my kids wouldn't have met their grandparents um, on my side. But I chose to um, command my actions and obey God, even if I didn't feel like it. Now, this may seem hypocritical to others, like it may not seem genuine for some or whatever, but hey, these are the there are times when people don't feel like going to work, but they, but they still do. Now, is that being hypocritical? Yeah, is that being hypocritical? It's not, right? Because they have to go to work. So I think it's the same thing with my obedience to God. I have to obey God. I didn't feel like doing that exact command, but I just have to. I just have to obey. But you know, not like it matters to. Um, but not like it matters anymore. Like what others think of my actions, as long as I am pleasing God and obeying Him, then I have nothing to worry about. And it's the same encouragement that I want to challenge you guys with. Like in your brokenness, um, even when you don't feel like it, choose to command your actions and not your emotions and follow what Jesus wants you to do. I know it's always easier said than done because we are all broken in different ways and some may seem deeper than others. But I know that when we invite the Holy Spirit in our hearts, when we empty out ourselves from ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to fill us in with, their, with, the, with His power, miracles happen. Things that we never thought we could do happens. Um, things that we thought we could never be free from, we can be free from. You know, there is freedom. There is freedom in the name of Jesus. There is freedom once we are one in Christ's power. See, this may be an ongoing thing that, um, that we have to do on a daily basis. We may have to do this every day where we have to empty ourselves out so that each day the Holy Spirit can work in us and fill us in. Um, the power of the Holy Spirit can move in our lives. And when we continue to do this, we will start to see changes and we will start to produce fruits. And what are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? In Galatians 5, 22-23, says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We can have experience and be all these fruits of the Holy Spirit. Just don't give up. The little that we give and offer to Jesus in our prayers can turn to all this. To all these fruits of the Holy Spirit. Just don't give up. Don't give up on people. Um, when you feel like giving up, choose to act instead. Act on Jesus' command. Love one another. Choose to obey Jesus' command and your reward, rewards will be nothing less than fulfilling. Now, in our brokenness, remember that there's, uh, there's power in our brokenness. Um, let me share to you our topic that 
um, we were studying last Friday in our Bible study, and I look close with this. Isaiah 61. Um, let me read. Good news for the oppressed. Verse 1. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to call, he has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prison, prisoners will be free. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. Verse 3. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. Verse 4, they will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they have been desert, deserted for many generations. For many generations. Verse 5, foreigners will be your servants. They will feed your flocks and plow your fields and tend your vineyards. Verse 6, you will be called priests of the Lord, ministers of our God. You will feed of the treasures of the nations and boast their riches. Verse 7, instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. Wow. <laughs> now this passage is telling us those who come out of brokenness can and will come into a great destiny. Um, they will take those things, those places that have been ruined and in desolation for many generations, and they will restore them. And not only that, they will have lasting joy, everlasting joy. That's crazy. So it is like a dose of power and authority will be given to them. The devil tries to destroy us and keep us in our brokenness. And Jesus comes along and says, here, take me. Let me show you who you really are and let me show you your future. You know, I believe that when God sets you free from a disease of the body, soul or spirit, you now have a power. You, have, you now have the power and authority to help others come into healing from that very thing you were delivered from. You know, if it's from poverty, is it depression that you're being delivered from? Is it from injustice? Is it from any sicknesses, long-term chronic diseases? And when you see people who are ravished, shattered and broken come into freedom, it is a grace and a beauty to behold then that free person, you know, and then that free person steps into his or her anointing and destiny. And you watch that person take another person, another broken person by the hand with compassion to bring freedom to that person. Now that's the way of love and that's the way of our father. You know, there are so many people um, that can be set free. And best of all, so many people can fall in love with the Trinity, the God, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And in our brokenness, those, the God, the Father, the Holy Spirit is what is empowering us in our brokenness. And that is the power in our brokenness. Um, that is how it is to be one in Christ in our brokenness. Um, one in Christ's power we are when we have accepted Christ in our hearts and in our lives we are um, well, how you say it? we are entitled to that power to that authority that we can actually use that we don't have to wait for heaven we can actually use it now while we're here on earth and live in prosperity and that power um, that Christ is allowing us to um, to grab from him or to draw from him, is giving us a life of abundance, a life of prosperity, a life um, of freedom, a life full of love, joy, you know, all those Holy Spirit gifts and fruits, sorry. And it's just amazing. And to be able to have that power to 
to help someone as well who is suffering from the same brokenness or from a different type of broken brokenness. You are being a tool. You are being a branch for God to, um, to reach to that person as well. And so I just really, really want to encourage you guys that I know there will be times of trials. There will be times of brokenness. But see that there will be beauty. There is beauty in that brokenness. When we are broken, God moves. When we are broken, God is close to us. When we are broken, God hears. God knows. God feels what we feel. Because He has felt it when He was here. He was, He was, um, like God is, God became flesh. God became flesh and felt every single thing that we are feeling right now and even worse. And so if you are confused or oh, God knows, exactly knows what we are going through in our brokenness and believe that there is power in that because he ascended from that brokenness. Remember, he ascended from that brokenness and we too can ascend from that brokenness in our lives. Amen. Amen. I hope you guys um, have cross something that you can use in your lives um you've got your own takeaways that you can um that you can you can um practice in our daily lives in our daily routines to reach out um to to other people and to find our you know to allow god to move in our lives to actually maybe empty ourselves out and you know lift up our pride lift up our our flaws lift up our, our our own selfish agendas to him so that he can move so that he can move in our lives and you know he'll just flow and then we'll see the power we'll have the power you know we'll actually acquire that power to pray for people have that authority for our breakthrough you know for our miracles to happen in our lives here on earth amen okay so um let's just um, pray I guess let's just close in prayer um, Heavenly Father we thank you Lord God that even in our brokenness there's so much beauty in it because you make it beautiful um, the power that we, we acquire from, from our brokenness Lord God comes only from you comes from you the power that you want in Christ's power sometimes is so hard to grasp it's so hard to understand but I guess all we have to do is just empty ourselves out and let you, let the Holy Spirit fill us in and let you do what you do, Lord God. And there are a lot of people right now who are broken, Lord Father, who are in, um, who are feeling a lot of hurt, who are feeling um, a lot of discrimination, who are suffering from injustice, Lord God. Um, Lord, we continue to lift them up to you, Lord God, for all those lives, Lord God, the black people, Lord God, for those people, Lord God, for their lives matter, Lord Father. And we know, Lord God, that you're going to continue to put value in their lives for people to see, for um, the whole country to see. And for the leaders, Lord God, we pray for the leaders, Lord Father, in, in America and all over the world, Lord God, to, I don't know how to fix it, Lord, but you do, and we're just going to trust in you, Lord God, and allow the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, so in some way we can help, um, one way or the other, we can help, um, we just ask for your guidance, Lord Father, and just lift up this burden of this world right now to you and know that justice has prevailed in your eyes that you have done that you have um, redeemed them from this injustice from this oppression Lord Father and for those that God who are also suffering from um, their personal injustice in their own in their own in their own lives that God I continue to speak Lord Father um, uh, victory Lord God in their lives in their families lives and in you know in just trusting in you lord father and i know that you are transforming us from glory to glory in this way lord father and you are helping us to produce the fruits lord father the fruits of the holy spirit lord god and we will continue to just um you know indulge in those amazing blessings in those amazing fruits like god as we continue to obey as we continue to to do what you command us to do even when we don't feel like doing it like god you are um giving us the the power to actually do it to do it like god um especially when we are 
um, hurting, especially when we when we are hurting, when we are when we are when it's not fair, when we think it's not fair, Lord God. But Lord, we continue to know you are a just God, and we know that you are good and you're always good. Um, Lord, we thank you so much for this Sunday service and for those, Lord God, who who wants to know you, Lord God. I pray this prayer um, for them to just follow us in this prayer. Lord Father, I am a sinner. I know that I am a sinner and I know that you love me and that you have sent your son, Jesus Christ, for me so that I can be free from 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 eternal death for my sins Lord God and I accept you Lord in my life I accept you Lord God to move in my life and allow the Holy Spirit to transform me Lord God I thank you Lord God for this power for this gift of salvation for this gift of grace um, I just want to surrender my life to you and let you take control of, of what's what's to come Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to, to receive your word, to hear your word, and to dwell in your word, Lord God. Help us to act on this, Lord God, and um, serve others, Lord God, and love others, Lord. And we pray, Lord God, for the whole church family to be safe, um, especially still at this time that there is still um, this pandemic that's happening. And we thank you, Lord God, for some restrictions that's being lifted. We pray for, the, for our family's safety. Um, safety and protection Lord God continue to bless and um, reveal yourself to all of us Lord God so that we can continue Lord God to just indulge in your name indulge in your power Lord Father Lord we love you and we thank you in Jesus name we pray amen thank you guys thank you for tuning in um yes yeah, so watch out for the announcement on the fb page um we will send through the link and we are excited to see you all very 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 soon um god bless guys and enjoy your sunday with your family